may be seated. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get ready for, uh, pick up the offering, um, so you guys can get, get that ready. Um, and that was, that was a good time in worship. Um, now, you know, Lord always ministers, right? Uh, Pastor Stephen has a good way of putting songs together, right, that kind of give a message and... And then he said something during the worship um, that kind of got my attention. He said, uh, you know, we, we give you all our plans. Like, we lay down all of our plans. And when he said that, like, in my mind, it was like, what about the good plans? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I have good plans. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, those two. <laughs> lay down the good plans. And I started, you know, just thinking about, you know, or I think it was the Lord like asking me, when it, when in your life have you ever had a plan that you thought was a bad plan? <laughs> and you said, okay, let's do that. <laughs> You've always thought your plans were good plans. Now, you're almost 50 years old. You look back. How many of those plans were not good plans? How many of those were bad plans? Like, oh man. Like, well, for me, like, like a lot of them. You know? first half of my life, like all of them. <laughs> Second half of my life, I made one or two. I chose Lydia, yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, the, the, at the time, you know, it was a good plan. At the time, it was like, you know, I'm gonna, I remember being 18 and having plans, and I remember being 21 and having other plans, and 25 and it's like they were good pl- they were like yeah I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna do all these things and, and a lot of these plans um, they were not good plans <laughs> see but now like I said you know approaching 50 and um, you know have some some experience some life experience uh, under my belt um, I don't my, you know my plans weren't didn't involve glorifying God like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And by, in, ten, in five years, I'm going to be here. In 10 years, I'm going to be here. In 20 years, I'm going to be... And it's like, well, how much of those plans involve glorifying God? Right? How much of those plans involve, you know, God's will and God's purposes? And, and you know, and so that's where I'm finding more and more that those are the things that really do matter. Those are the things, the things that that are for the glory of God are the things that really count and everything else is kind of like yeah you know we'll see we'll see how it goes um, but anyways that was that you know that all that from that one comment but um it was a good time of worship but yeah I would just encourage you you know to give all of your plans to the Lord right some of them he'll give them back to you and he'll say okay yeah this one this one passes but some of them he'll he'll rearrange and um, and that's okay Right, that's, a, that's a good thing. Amen. Anyway, um, if you do uh, have your uh, need an envelope, you can raise your hand and offer. Uh, offer. I, don't, I don't know what I'm saying. An usher will get you an, an envelope. Um, I did want to make a comment. So we did have, and, and I'm going to share a little bit more about it in a little bit. We had a worship service um, this Wednesday, and during that worship service, we did have um, an offering. We picked up an offering, and um, I just wanted to share a little bit about that. Um, because I was having a conversation with someone and we were talking about it. And there's a, there's a specific reason why I talk about offerings the way I do um, as far as, um, as an act of worship, as, a, as an extension of our you know, praising God and worshiping Him. Um, and so, there was, and there, so there's a specific reason why during that, because we had a worship service, right? And so we had you know, music and we uh, gave opportunity for testimony and we had prayer. And then we had offering, right? And I think we did it at the end, but I talked about it uh, throughout and, and was just saying, you know, if the Lord puts it in your heart, you know, to give something, just keep the, the amount in mind, right? And then at the end, we're going to have that opportunity to do that. Um, because I remember um, there was a time when I was just like really... It was one of those times where God was rearranging all my plans and just kind of showing me His will for my life. Like there, there's been, there are certain times that I can think of in my life where just things were like kind of falling into place, kind of like making sense as far as my walk with the Lord, uh, or more sense than other times. And I remember there was one time that I was like that, and, and I was at this service. It was a worship service. I, it might have been at Word of God Church. I'm not sure, uh, but it was. This was uh, I don't know how long ago. Um, 
it was a long time ago. Was it maybe at least 20 or more years ago? Because I don't remember if I was married yet or not. But I was at a worship service, and I was just so, you know, just loving, expressing my love to the Lord. And, and I, just, I wanted to do more. I was like, you know, what more can I do? Like, what, like I'm singing, I'm crying, I'm, you know, dancing. Like, what else can I do? And, and I, you know, in me, I wanted to give an offering. Like, I wanted to just give an offering to the Lord. And then so I remember going up to the ushers and, hey, is there, there going to be an offering picked up? And like, no, there isn't. Well, can I give an offering? Like, yeah, yeah sure. And so I, you know, gave an offering. It was just a, a, something from my heart to give to the Lord. Um, and, and so, that, so I remember doing that as an act of worship. And, and that's why I, I always include that as, as worship because, um, you know, when, when I gave like that, it was different, right? It wasn't so much like, oh, no, here comes the basket, or oh, no, the envelope, or oh, you know, not, no more calculations, no more like, okay. I mean, I definitely don't encourage anybody to give more than you should as far as, you know, don't give all your money away and then be hungry all week, you know. <laughs> But, you know, do it as an act of worship. You know, you, of course we use wisdom. But, man, the Lord just reminded me about this as, I was ta- as I'm talking. Um, and I guess it was shortly after that. Cause I remember it was, it was before I was married. Um, because there was this time that the Lord spoke to me. Um, it, was, it was really, it was interesting. It, 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 I must have been around 25, and I had, I think I was on my way to Dallas. I guess my nephew was about to be born. And I remember the Lord spoke to me about finances. I think at the time I didn't have a job. But the Lord told me that I would never have to worry about money again. I remember that. I don't remember if I've ever shared that with anybody. But just the Lord told me. And look, so look, to me, that's a big thing. That's. It might be different than for others because I was a guy who lived on the street, <laughs> right? Like I was homeless with no money, with no nothing. Uh, there was a time where I had a car, so I lived in my car. You know, um, you know, I, the, the home was always there, but I, I, you know, my parents' home, so it was always there available for me to go to, but, but I, I wouldn't always go. And so I, and then even that, you know, we lived, you know, growing up, you know, in, in poverty, and so, so when the Lord told me that, it was, it was like, wow, like it was a real, like one, one less thing to worry about, you know. <laughs> um, and, and since then, I mean, yeah, we've had, you know, we've had to like try to make ends meet and things like that. You know, we've had a little, little um, okay, you know, whether it's um, lost a job or lost a position or whatever. We, we've had those experiences, you know, since then, but I've never had to worry about money like I've never not had money I've never not been able to eat and I've been able to pay bills like and and I've always uh, the Lord has always uh, allowed me to to consistently move up you know in, in my career and in, in my jobs um, financially and in positions and, and and I remember that you know the Lord like I said, the Lord just reminded me when he spoke that word to me and I believed it when he said it I believed it and 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 um, you know I went up to Dallas I got a job over there uh, it was real interesting. I ended up getting hurt there at my job, and so I was uh, disabled for about a year. And I was getting paid um, through that time more than I would have gotten paid if I had a job here. Because I came back here and I was getting paid more than I would have if I had gotten a job here. Because over there they paid more. Um, but anyway, just the 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 I had never made the connection right of that you know giving out of a heart of worship, right, and just giving. See, because the thing about finances is that, that they have a tendency of getting a hold of you, right? They, 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 you know, like you think you're holding it, right? But it's actually holding you. <laughs> like it's kind of like, like, you know, like I'm holding it, but it's holding you. And, and when you give, you know, willingly and with a joyful heart, you know, you let go and it lets go of you, Amen. right? And that's how God wants us to live, right? And this is not, <laughs> this is not a, send me all your money thing, right? This is, this is a, you know, uh, worship the Lord thing, right? And, and so, and, and so, and it's not always about putting it in the basket. Um, you already got the envelopes around, and did you already? Um, um, but it, you know, sometimes and it's happened to us as a couple, and it's happened, you know, to me individually, where God will just lead me to give somebody, you know, money, you know, somebody I know, somebody I don't know, you know, family member, somebody who I don't think deserves it, but the Lord will put it in my heart, you know. It could be a couple of hundred, it could be, you know, 50 bucks, like, 
but that's what I mean by having that giving. I don't mean that it's always like, it's not trying to get everybody to give money to the <laughs> ministry. That's not. But, um, but just that, that that part of worship is, is valid. It's relevant, right? It, it, it's important, right? And so, so that's my prayer, right? That as we give, that we give, you know, out of love for God, right? And that God, you know, respond back with, um, with just his blessing, how he does. And, and just, like I said, I never, I never made the connection to just right now <laughs> about that, about that giving and about that, what the Lord had told me. Um, but, um, but anyway, yeah, so um, w- did we pick up the offering? Okay, thank, thank you. Let me go ahead and just, just pray for it, for it real quick. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to, to worship you, Lord, from our heart, Lord God, and to, and to be able to, 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 in a tangible way, to hand that over to you, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God, that you bless that, Father, that you bless it in a very personal, intimate way, Father. I gave my experience, Father God, and, and maybe somebody else has a different experience, Lord God. But I know that you are very personal and, and that you're, you, you don't do the same thing for everybody. But I thank you for, for the fact that you do move, you do respond. You, you don't leave us in a one-way relationship, but you interact with us, Lord. And we praise you for that. We thank you, Lord God. Bless this offering. Bless those that give, that you meet all of their needs, Father. You meet all of their needs and, and all of their concerns, uh, financial, and that you bless their homes, Lord God. And we thank you for that, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and well I, I don't know if anybody has testimony uh, that they would like to share um, um, anything that the Lord's done I know I, I, know I, I have one I, and if anybody else ha- has one uh, feel free to come up um, we'll have time for testimony and after testimony just so everybody knows we, we're going to have communion today it is the no- November 1st first day of the month um, so we're going to have communion, and then also as a reminder, it is November 1st, which means uh, voting. Uh, Tuesday is uh, election day, and so hopefully everybody's already voted. Um, I think most of, most of us have, but it's really, really important that we do that. Um, we need to be active you know, in you know, what goes on in our, in our country, in the government, um, always praying and seeking God and honoring him with, with even that, with even the way that we vote. Um, so strongly encourage everybody uh, to do that. Um, but uh, testimony. So the testimony I want to give is, is about the worship service that we had this Wednesday. Um, and it was very different for me um, because I'm not sure why it was so different. Because I love the worship that we have here. You know, the, the Lord just like really uh, just gets a hold of me and he just does things to me. Uh, during worship, but this was different. At least for me, it was. I don't know how the other people that were here. We had visitors that day as well. Um, experienced that day, but I was very tired that day. It, you know, because evening service and I work throughout the day. And then um, I know you're not supposed to talk about it, but I was fasting. Um, pe- people don't t- like to say they were fasting because then they they feel like they're that Pharisee who's. But I was right. I was fasting, and so. It, for whatever reason, that was it was a str- that day was a struggle, right, to fast, and um, so I was here and I was hungry and I was tired and I was you know, uh, I, I, not that I didn't want to be here, but I was just not in worship mode, and then and then so I went through the service right and and, and it was a, it was a good service the, the 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 music was good it was impacting but but there was just that you know feeling that I had inside right of it was just being tired. Right, and so, so it wasn't um, as impacting emotionally as I expected it to be for me. Right, this is my personal experience. Um, but the next day, I, I woke up and I felt different. Right, and and, and it, it actually, this reminded me of that when the Lord told me you don't have to worry about money anymore. Um, Something felt different inside of me. Like I woke up and I felt like something had changed. And then I got up and there was like a different um, purpose in my day, right? And, and, and it felt really good. And there was things that, that used to bother me mentally and emotionally that kind of weren't there anymore. Right? Things were just always like, I, I, I think a lot. And that leads to worry a lot sometimes. 
But there was things that, you know, just like weigh me down that were gone. And that I believe are gone for good. Yeah. Right? That the Lord delivered me. But it was, but, but was interesting was, and the Lord kind of showed me that, that, you know, yes, we do have emotional experiences in the Lord, right? I mean, He touches all of, every area of our life, right? And so emotions are involved. But with that, there's also a beneath the surface that's going on that God does. And sometimes we kind of take that for granted or we, like I said, I just realized right now about the worshiping through the finances and then the word that he gave me. Sometimes, the, you know, we just miss it, right? But I believe that as a result of the worship service and what God was doing in his presence, that he reached into my heart and he made a change, right? And he, and he does that, right? That it happens to us, you know, as we're here, as we're worshiping. But, but it wasn't with that outward emotional, I mean, I'm sure I did cry during the worship, you know, a little bit, but it wasn't like something that I could say, oh yeah, you know, the, the, I had all these chills and goosebumps and all that, but but the Lord did a change in me, and I believe like that's it, like those worries about, okay, you know, um, am I doing enough, is it, you know, am I, am I going to be able to, to um, accomplish all that needs to be accomplished, um, like those, there were just thoughts, like okay, I need to do this, I need to do that, but they weren't like like weights that I was carrying anymore. And so anyway, I just praise God for that. Um, you know, I give him all the honor, all the glory because he is worthy and that's one of the desires of my heart is to be able to, to serve him with my life without that, you know, burden of, of you know, am I doing enough? Am I, you know, um, it's hard to put into words. But anyway, I just wanted to honor God for that. So that's a testimony that I have. Anybody else have a testimony they'd like to share? Testimony, word of encouragement. You know, you're coming up? We don't have the the white piece. Uh, just don't, uh, don't lick it. it. Just don't lick it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> okay. uh, um, so I have a lot to say, and I don't know where to start quite, right? But I guess I'll just uh, fulfill the basic definition of testimony and say what God's done for me lately. Um, I got I got paid at work twice. The amount of work I did, that that is the, that's a blessing that you know obviously anyone could appreciate, but ultimately I reali- I re- I realized how ultimately it's it's worthless because what is like what is the worth of like double like the money that I made at all, it's worthless in the end of, at the end of the day, that it's it's um, it's so fleeting money money finances. They, they can take a hold of you, and they really shouldn't. It's such a man-made and a temporary system that will flee away as soon as we die. And I think we, we should pay attention to that, that life is short. Life is short, and there's nothing wrong with that. People wrestle with that idea every day. Right now, there are people struggling with this concept every day. And we really shouldn't, because there's nothing wrong with life being short. Because the person who lives long and the live, person who lives short is loved is doesn't matter how doesn't matter it doesn't matter how long or short you live because at the end of the day it matters where you end up it doesn't matter whether you die rich or you die poor you're still going to heaven or hell it doesn't matter what race you are doesn't matter what gender you are it doesn't matter um, where you're from. Where, where you're trying to be, um, what you've done, what you will do, what you will gain from this life, and what you will lose in this life. God loves you all the same. Doesn't matter who you associate with, and I, th- I want to I highlight that right quick because I think we, should, we all c- kind of forget that Jesus did not just hang out with holy people. Jesus hanged out with sinners, prostitutes, thieves, tax collectors, people who swindle people. I think we should remember that because it doesn't matter what we, who we associate with right now in this life because those people are temporary. Whether they're even there for the rest of our lives, those people are temporary in the long-term scheme of things. Right? I, when I came into the church this morning, I came with a, a plaid shirt, like, you know, a little nice shirt just to look a little bit nicer for church. And I think you'll realize that I took that off. I took off... All the all the extra jewelry that I usually have, I took off, or I put 
food I brought aside um, because I wanted I wanted to be in my most minimal form because I I realized how worthless all of that stuff is. What I, I realized how worthless my position is as whether I am the pastor's son. I re I realize how worthless that is if my soul is not pure. I realize how worthless my pride, my image, every all of that is absolutely worthless. If everyone here thinks I am a bum, it does not matter. Whether everyone thinks I am prospering, that does not matter. Uh, let me tell y'all. Uh, let me let me be real truthful with y'all. I'm failing four classes in school, and that has to do with a whole bunch of circumstances due to the quarantine and all that, and my own. Um, attention span and other issues such as that. But honestly, I'm not worried about that anymore. I was stressing yesterday. I was absolutely terrified about all the things that's going to happen at school. And you, you know what? When I came in here, I said, you know what? I should pray to God and give thanks for that little bit of money for that paycheck. You know what's funny? I never, I, you know, I was going to go into, there's a little bathroom in the back, and I was going to go pray for a little second. And, you know, just to give a little quick thanks. And I never got that opportunity because I was greening at the door. Um, and you know what? I'm glad I was greening at that door because that gave me that time to think. That gave me that time to ponder everything that's going on right now. That gives me the time to ponder what that check means, what those clothes mean, what those, what those uh, shiny medals mean, what, what that food means. Whether I see food for the rest of my life or whether I never see food again, it does not matter. I could die starving, I could die fed, and it will not matter as long as my soul is pure in the eyes of the Lord. Jesus, God loved Jesus when he was starving in the desert. He loved Jesus when he was dying on the cross. He loved Jesus when he was hanging out with sinners. He loved, I think we really need to pay attention to that. We need to pay attention to what, where, where are the center of our religion. You know no, I, I, during worship, I was pacing around. I don't know if anyone noticed. I was pacing around in the back, crying my eyes out because I was, cause something Theo said um, that really st struck a chord with me. There was a time where religion died. There, there was a point where all religion dies. Because Jesus did not come to earth to say, oh, let us all, co let's all convert to this one religion this one, under this one banner. He said, let me give you life. My children, let me give you life. Let me bring you eternal life and an eternal war beyond this 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 meaningless life that that is worthless and fleeting. There there there's so much more to th than this temporary happiness that we're all taught to chase. All we're all taught to chase. Our, our, we live in a society that that tries to convey the message that uh, our over, our happiness is what's important. We should no, but in reality, we should be concerned with the stability of our life. The the. Like this goes both religiously and beyond religion. This, this, this um, we we really should take more focus about the stability of where we are at. It doesn't matter. Like, what does it matter if we're all in a good place? If at the end of the day we're all going to hell, because that's where we would all be going had Jesus not died on the cross. All of the disciples, their words would be nothing if Jesus, if without the sanctity of Christ. Every every person that came before that prophesied Jesus Christ, all of them would have failed. If it were not for the sanctity of Christ, and we really need to pay attention to that, the tradition, the religion, all of that does not matter as without the sanctity of Christ. Everything we do is worthless without the sanctity of Christ. And I, and I, want, I don't want to bring it back to the offering because that also struck a weird little chord that, with me. It doesn't matter whether you give to this church. Obviously, that would be nice if you did, but in reality, it, God's not going to be hurt if, you, if none of you ever give to this church again. If I don't give to this church again, whether I work at, at that door, it does not matter. It matters where our heart is. It doesn't matter if all, if all of a sudden all of our finances are just gone. If this building just burns to the ground, that does not matter in the grand scheme of things. Because we can always get around it. God's not just going to let us um, suffer for, for eternity. He's going to pay us back when, at, the end of the, at the end of this life. <sighs> um, and, he, and I think we should also pay attention to the fact that it, it, it's not even like he loved us after we converted. I, 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 don't, I don't know why this, this one, um, this one uh, train of thought kind of kept on. Repeating in the back of my head. Jesus loved my dad when he was drunk under that bridge. 
God was there with my mom when her mom was dying and she had to see that. God was there with Theo walking to school when he was just talking to Theo, just, just trying to help him through his day. God was there with my Thea Didi when she was having her own struggles with everything that was going on. God was with all of us, whether we were believers or not, whether we took him for granted or not. And I will admit, I've taken him for granted for quite, for quite a while. I've, I've had my own struggles with, with school and um, friends and stupid drama, but ultimately all of that does not matter. It's, it's unfortunate that we sometimes allow ourselves to be caught up in such little and maniacal things, or menial, whatever. It does not even matter. None, none of it matters in the grand scheme of things without the sanctity of Christ. I feel like I've, I've, there's, a lot, there's a lot to be said, but um, to be quite honest, the, the word, the, I, I, the, the it's, it's really unfortunate. I, I kind of, I, I, I feel like there's way more to say, but I, I feel like, oh yeah, yeah, there was something else to say. God loved me when I was in a closet trying to kill myself at midnight two weeks ago, and that, I, I, it's so crazy that two weeks ago I tried to kill myself at midnight, nearly on on the dot midnight. I tried to kill myself, and yet I am still here. I'm still here and. God loved me in that when I was there struggling with what what, what I'm going through. God with us with, with our during her struggle because it's not the it's not God just laying out the, these these uh, challenges for us to just like jump over the hurdles. It's the devil setting up traps for us, trying to plot on us and just destroy us, and just break our souls and break our, our spirits. But I think we all need to focus on the the end, the end of that race. Doesn't matter how how we get there or um, what happens along the way, we need to be able to focus on that race, focus on that prize, that grand prize that makes all of this worth it, that makes all of this worth something. Yeah, I'm done. Praise God. Um, one thing I appreciate about Gabriel was a lot of things. Um, definitely appreciate his honesty, bravery. Um, but uh, also, you know, as a as a minister, so like I I recognize that when I'm uh, asking people to come up and give testimonies, like there's there's always a little thing in the back of my mind, back of any minister's mind, thinking, what are they gonna say? <laughs> So what I, you know, and, and it's just a natural thing. It happens to me, even in regular conversations at church, like, as, as I'm, uh, as I'm listening, you know, I'm flipping through my Bible in my head and, you know, making sure things are scriptural, make things line up with scripture. And with my son, uh, even when it's personal conversations between me and him, um, when we do talk about spiritual things, um, not that we do that all, not that we sit around doing that all the time, I want to give that, a, but, you know, the times that those, that the, that, that, that it happens, um, you know, I'm checking them off, checking them off, scriptural, scriptural, thank you. Um, you know, and so, you know, I'm a uh, um, stamp of approval, <laughs> you, know, you know, on that, you know, there's a lot of, you could go through uh, the Bible and, and uh, back up, you know, a lot of, a lot, a lot, if not everything that he said, um, but, um, but anyway, so I appreciate that, Gabriel, does anybody else have anything they want to share, um, Go for it. Hi, good morning. Um, yeah, when when uh, Pastor was saying that every, what the things that Gabriel was saying, you can back up with scripture. I was thinking, oh yeah, Ecclesiastes. <laughs> I was like, you know, you go to Ecclesiastes. And, this is in vain. That's in vain. That's in vain. <laughs> anyway, um, no, thank you. Thank you, Gabriel, for sharing your heart. We appreciate that. You know, we, that's what we're all about, being humble, being open, being transparent, you know, not trying to put errors and look all good and all that. We, we want to be real. So we, I appreciate that. We appreciate your, appreciate your sharing. Um, this, so, you know, we get together once a week to pray. 
and we pray about the church and you know whatever the Lord puts on our hearts. Um, but that's basically what basically what we get together for uh, me and Pastor and and Lydia. And so I just felt to go ahead and share this this past week when we got together um, we were praying, and I just felt. Um, I just felt in my heart that it's uh, there's going to be a, a shift in gears. That's what I felt from the Lord. There's going to be a shift in gears here with this ministry. Um, you know, there's going to just, I just like uh, the Lord's going to, it's like, okay, well, it's time to take it up another notch, take it up another level. I'm, I don't know what that looks like, um, you know, whatever decisions, you know, whatever, you know, things that are going to be done. I don't know, but I don't know. This going to be a, it's the Lord's going to take this ministry to another level. Um, so anyway, just wanted to share that, keeping that in prayer, um, you know, because, you know, we're all just all about, you know, just bringing glory to the Lord and, and moving with him, you know, moving with him. And so anyway, so I want to share that. Amen. Yeah, just comment real quick on that since because um, we have that prayer meeting and we have another prayer uh, during the week and I brought up that on the other prayer. Um, and so something to, to clarify about that. So anything that, so whenever we talk about the ministry, to me at least, you know, I always see it not so much as what this church, you know, it, but I see it as our lives, right? I see it as, you know, I, I see that what happens here is just kind of like, where we all come together and share our lives with each other. And so, so I believe that that word is not just for, you know, feed my lambs church and what it's going to do, but I believe it's for each of our lives, right? And, and, and I know we all go, are going through different things, different seasons, different, you know, circumstances, but I believe that God, you know, brings us together. And, um, and so anyway, so with that shifting gears thing, I know when I first heard her say it, um, in my mind, I thought, to me, I thought shifting gears, um, oh, because I thought of changing gears, right? Changing gears. And so it seemed like, like a change, like a change in direction or change something else. But then as she explained it more, and then when we brought it up later on in the, in the, in the other prayer meeting, I, I asked, hey, what, what, is, what do you think of when you think of changing gears? And then um, the, the, somebody commented, um, acceleration. And then so, because when she said, Shifting gears like like a car, that changed the meaning in my head. Right, it wasn't about changing direction. It was okay. We were going this way. Now we're going to go this way. It wasn't, and I don't and I don't believe that that's what that word is about. I believe it's like when you're in a car, you, a standard car, you know, you cha- you have gears, and then as you're going faster, you know, then you have to change to the next gear. Now I didn't feel like that word was. Hey, you guys need to hurry up and get busier and do more. Um, I felt like it was like there was an acceleration and you need to adjust to it. You know, you adjust to it. When you adjust to it, then you're, you're, on, you're on course, right? If you don't shift gears, then your car is struggling and you're still going faster, but you're, you're working harder. When you shift gears, then the transmission kicks in. I don't know if everybody knows what I'm talking about, but you know, <laughs> the, the engine works, doesn't work as hard. To keep up with that acceleration, so I don't know. That's a real technical way of looking at it. Sorry about that, but but I just wanted to make that you know make that clear that it's not about changing direction. Okay, we were going this way, and now we're going to go this other way. Like we're still going in the same direction, whatever that direction that is. We're still going in that direction, and um, but we're we're accelerating, right? And, and I believe that that, that you know it'll, it'll play itself out. I'm, I'm not going to say what it is. You know, I'm not going to use my own uh, you know earthly thinking earthly wisdom, but we'll, we'll, we, we trust the Lord, right? I hope bring that about. Um, we do have another testimony that uh, Stephen is, is um, Pastor Stephen is, is, is getting up ready, um, and then we are going to have communion as well. Um, do you have it ready? Yeah. Okay. Good morning. Whoa. <laughs> I have a testimony to share with you. you got, is it? Are you? Volume. Is the volume? Okay. Yeah, well, let me just... Sundays and Wednesdays uh, through Facebook and um, well um, that's been a blessing our family um, has been
been recently uh, confronting something that's made me feel um, really sad, I'm very hurt, um, confused, and um, we've just been praying and we've been talking to friends and uh, they've been encouraging us. We've been so encouraged through the church. Uh, this past Sunday, uh, through the testimonies, I was so encouraged, so moved um, to um, continue to pray, continue to believe. It just encouraged me so much. I'm so thankful for that testimony. Um, so, Monday, um, I was reading the Bible. And um, I came across this scripture in Psalm 9-1 that said, I will recount all your wonderful deeds. I started to think about that and I thought, wow, I will recount all your wonderful deeds. Then I read a little bit further and it said in Psalm 9-6, the enemy has come to an end in perpetual ruins. And so I was thinking, wow, Lord, wow, yes, Lord, you have defeated the enemy. That's right, he has come to an end. So then I started to praise God over the situation that we've been confronting, and I was just saying and declaring um, over this situation that the enemy has come to his ruin. He's come to an end and he's been defeated. And so that was my prayer that day. So on Tuesday, that was Monday, and Tuesday, um, the Lord continues to encourage me through His Word and time and prayer. And so Wednesday comes and there's a worship service. So um, we're going to tune in through Facebook. And uh, <laughs> that, was, that was funny. Um, well, that particular uh, time during the day when the service was uh, starting, it was not working out for us to be home and watch it on the TV like we usually do. And so, because we had a, um, a really important errand to, to do, we could not leave it for another time or another day. And so, I said, okay, Lord, um, we're just going to have to do this somehow. <laughs> So we're not going to miss this service and uh, we just want to join in and we want to be blessed uh, by this worship. So um, at one point I, I <laughs> Stephen is singing out of my purse. <laughs> so um, anyway, and so in the car ride um, I have the phone and uh, we're, we're listening and watching through the, through the phone just said the Lord. Um, I'm going to rejoice in you. I'm going to be uh, glad in you. And um, so just uh, thinking about what I had read earlier that week, um, I was just praising God, just praising Him. And I was just saying to the Lord, uh, you've been so good to me. You've been so kind and faithful. And so... And then there was a song that um, uh, that said, I will rejoice, I will rejoice, and be glad. And I was like, yes, Lord, yes, I will rejoice, and I will be glad in you. And so it was a, it was a really good time in worship. And after the worship, uh, the pastor asks um, uh, for there to be a time of uh, giving an offering. And so, um, I was thinking about it, I'm like, oh, well, I usually don't hear that happen on Wednesdays. And so I was just listening, and the uh, pastor was saying that um, we could give anything. We could give 
I think he said we could give a penny, and I mean, if it was going to be a sacrifice unto the Lord, it was going to be a gift unto the Lord. And so I was like, okay. So, but at the same time, I was thinking, well, I already gave my tithes, I already gave our, our offering for that week. I mean, I don't know if I should give again. And so I was thinking about that and I thought, well, okay, I'm, I'm going to give God a gift. And so I gave an offering and I said, Lord, this is for you. This is a gift for you. This is a sacrifice. Um, and so I, I just gave it and I forgot about it. And, um, and so that was Wednesday night and so Thursday comes and I'm just uh, just so glad that uh, we were able to join the worship and so Friday comes and we get a card in the mail and this card had a check inside and it was a card from our friends and just giving us a, a kind greeting and uh, and so there was this check in there. And I was like, why are they giving us money? I don't understand that. <laughs> I don't think this is right. <laughs> I don't think we should be giving money from them. We should be giving money to them. That's what I was thinking. And so I was just telling the Lord, Lord, this is wrong. <laughs> and, um, and I was thinking, should I call them up? Should I tell them that I'm going to tear this check up? <laughs> Accept it. We're not going to receive it. And I was just thinking about that. And so I sat down and I, I think I was having lunch uh, or getting ready for lunch. And uh, so I sat down and I started to just think about it a little bit more. And I was just going back and forth with that. And then... Um, the Lord reminded me of the offering that I had given on Wednesday. And, and how I had given that gift to him. He reminded me of that. Remember that gift you gave? And this check was more than the double of what I had given. And I was like, Lord, I didn't give it expecting anything. I just gave it to you. And I felt the Lord was saying, this is what I do. I'm faithful. And it's not about the money, brothers and sisters. It's not about that. Our heart isn't focused on money. It's about and that intimacy with the Lord. And so then I started to realize, God, you're working. You're working. And I don't even realize it. You're working. You're doing things. And so I was just so encouraged because of the situation where we've been confronting. Um, I realized that he's working in this situation and that he will be faithful in our family as we continue to yield to him. He responds back because that's who he is. He's faithful. <clears throat> so I just wanted to encourage everybody today. And um, we love you guys. We miss you guys. We wish we were there right now. Cool. Thank you, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, she is watching. Thank you, Abby. <laughs> Um, no, what a blessing! It, it, it's a uh, you know that was about there. That was a, a, a week in the life of Abby.
<laughs> no, but that was, a, that was a, a huge blessing. It's really good to, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> what? Because you went through the day, like Monday, and then, Tuesday, and then Wednesday, and then Thursday. I'm sorry, I'm just teasing. I mean, it was it was really powerful, a huge blessing, and and yeah, and I'm I'm glad she said it the way she said it too, because I I agree that that it's not about the money and like. Brother Gabriel, or the angel Gabriel, whatever you want to call him, <laughs> my son Gabriel, um, said, you know, money is, is temporary. There is no money in heaven, believe it or not. You know, <laughs> the Bible talks about riches. It talks about, you know, prospering. It talks about, th- but it's not about money. It's not about cash money, right? Um, but I like the point that was made there because, because it's not just about that. It's about the heart, you know, that gives. And so things that aren't, don't have anything to do with money, right? A kind word, you know, a, an act, you know, a service to a person or to, to the church or to, you know, a ministry or a need that, that the Lord reveals to you. It's, it, it's, it's all the same, right? Because it's from the heart, right? It's not about, oh, if I give this, then I'm going to get, you know, more. It's like if you, if you act, God will respond. Right, and, and I think that's an awesome thing. Um, anyone else have anything they want to share? This has been a blessing, for sure.